Hello students, how are you? I hope so. You all are fine and well. Okay. And uh, continuously doing your studies too. Right. So, here we are going to start the new video, the new session for the 10th class. Myself Sunil Pawar from New Catholic Mission High Secondary School, Jhabua. Okay. And uh, today we are taking, uh, as you know that in last session we already started chapter 8 okay and is it chapter 8 actually we are completing this chapter in three parts in first part we already talk about the asexual reproduction in animals and plants right now in this second chapter we are talking about the sexual reproduction in flowering plants clear as you know that in ninth class we also learn that what is the flowering plant the flowering plants means also considered the angiospermic plants, the seeded plants, okay? And they have this specific organ of reproduction that is the flower. That's why we are calling it the uh, sexual reproduction in flowering plants, okay? So in this uh, session or in this video, we are just talking about only and only the sexual reproduction in the flowering plants and we will conclude this chapter with the human reproduction and the reproductive health in the third session and the final session okay now uh, i think so you remember that what is the asexual reproduction clear few facts i uh, you should remember in asexual reproduction single parent is required either of any sex whether it is male or female right then in second thing the individual which produced by them will exactly a copy of parent it will be an identical feature with their parents you know that why what is the reason right the reason is it produces by the mitotic cell division no exchange of genetic material no crossing over okay no manipulation in genetic material that's why whatever the number of individual which produced by the parent it will be the exact copy of their parents and you know that we call them clone okay so here uh, because of all are similar so they are quite uh, there is quite difficulty to adopt themselves right and that's why they are not adopting themselves according to the changing environmental condition so no variations will observe and if no variation, no uh, origin of the new species, that means it is not important from the organic evolutionary point of view, right? But here, what do you observe in the sexual reproduction? The reproduction is the process of fusion of haploid gametes resulting in the production of a diploid zygote which ultimately develop into new organism, right? Few facts are there the process of fusion of haploid gametes what are the gametes the male gamete is sperm and female gamete is ova in animals okay and in plants the male gametes is uh, present in the pollen grains and female gamete is present female gamete egg is present in the ovule right so what are the gonads of uh, male and female in the flower that is the embryo sac is the female gonad and the pollen gland is the male gonad in which we find this or you can call them uh, you can call them the gametophyte also okay what is the male gametophyte pollen gland what is the female gametophyte that is the embryo sac right so in this one due to meiotic cell division a diploid parental cell form haploid gamete what is the meaning of haploid gamete? A single set of chromosome is there. That is called as the haploid gamete. Okay. And resulting in the production of a diploid zygote. Because of their fusion, when male and female gamete get fuses, you know that this process is called as fertilization. Okay. And resulting again the formation of a diploid cell. That is the zygote. Okay. And this way, the a formation of this haploid gametes is helpful after the fusion to restore the parental condition of 
two sets of chromosomes that is the diploid condition okay and they finally develop into the new organism by the further embryonic development right one more thing the sexual reproduction in flowering plants involve transformation of diploid sporophyte cells into haploid gametophytic cell as you know that in the anther okay which is located on the stamen we will discuss later gametogenesis is there and which is responsible for the production of the male gamete that is the uh, which is further responsible for production of this one thing clear so this main plant body is sporophytic and it will produce which one thing haploid gametes in the gametophyte clear in the pollen gland and embryo sac right so this occurs through meiosis and subsequent fusion of haploid gametes from opposite set to form a zygote and ultimately forms a diploid plant body clear now remember to produce haploid gamete a specific process of cell division is compulsory and you already learned this division in ninth class what is it that is the meiosis okay in this meiosis two specific division are there one one that is the uh, re reductional division first and second is the simple division okay so reductional division is responsible to make the number of chromosome half okay and second mitotic di division is responsible to divide them into the two cells two two cell that's why one turns into the four haploid cells clear now here we are going to discuss the reproduction in plants okay you know that what is the reproductive part of the plant as you know that in sexual reproduction a specific part that is called as the reproductive organ is undergoes in the process of participation and produce the new individual okay so in the plants this reproductive organ is flower you know that what is flower flower is the reproductive organ of the plant and it is nothing special it is just a modified form of the stem clear so now here flower is a modified condensed shoot arising on the axil of the small leaf like structure that called bracts and consist of four walls that is attached to the receptacle okay so with this definition we can learn that the reproductive part of the plant is flower and this flower is developed from stem actually it is a modified stem okay who modified its uh, its leaves for a specific purpose okay this picture will make you very clear that okay with the help of this pedicel this flower is attached with the stem or the main branch okay it is also absent in some flower that is called as the a pedicel it one clear now then here this swollen structure is called as thalamus clear and on this thalamus this four floral whorls are there okay if you observe that the outermost whorl is calyx okay then second whorl is corolla third whorl is androecium and the fourth and the innermost whorl is gynecium clear you know that all these four whorls are there in this one we can categorize them into the accessory and main reproductive part clear this calyx and corolla are considered as the accessory reproductive part because they are not responsible for the production of the gametes but they are helpful or they are assisting the process of reproduction clear and this two one androecium and gynecium right these two are the male and female reproductive part of the plant flower okay so if we start from the calyx then what do you mean by the calyx calyx is the outermost whorl which is basically green in color its single unit is called as sepal okay and it perform two basic function in the bud form it is responsible to cover the whole flower and help to protect them from the surrounding second thing after blooming the flower it helps to uh, do two things one thing that is the photosynthesis and second thing it supports flower from the outer surface okay now 
then we move towards the next flower next part of the flower that is the corolla okay this corolla is the second outermost whorl of the flower okay it is basically colorful in nature may be scented right and its single it is called as petal right so this petal is colorful it is scented so that's why it make this flower beautiful right and this uh, modification or this one is responsible to attract the insect and later we will discuss that how it will be helpful to uh, perform this process of cross pollination okay this is one of the main reason for the cross pollination okay and uh, in some plants in some flower you may observe that this sepals and petals are not differentiated from each other okay both look alike then we call this condition as a perianth okay and it's single and it is called as tepal okay what is this what is the basic term perianth when there is no difference between the calyx and corolla both look alike they like sometimes petals and sepals both are green in color and sometimes petals and sepals both are the same color no distinction between them so when they are like a sepal then it is called as sepaloid and when they are like a petal then it is called as petaloid flower okay and their single it is called as tepal tepal remember this word okay now then we are moving forward to discuss this structure okay first of all this few terms are there which help you to uh, learn about the flower okay first one that is the bisexual flower okay the flower which contain both the two reproductive flower reproductive part of the flower that is the stamen and the carpel okay because both the two sexes are present that's why it is called as bisexual flower it is also called as complete flower because all the four whorls are there right second thing it is also called as the hermaphrodite right bisexual flower or hermaphrodite the same thing what is the basic fact both the two reproductive organs are present there then we come to the next more term that is the unisexual flower okay the meaning itself clear uni means single when only a single reproductive organ is present in the flower then we call it the unisexual flower it may be male flower or it may be female flower okay when only stamen is present there that is called as male flower then only three floral parts are there the outer calyx corolla and stamen there is absence of gynoecium no pistil at all clear and this flower is also called as stamenate flower right now the second flower which consisting only and only pistil or the gynoecium absence of the male reproductive part that is called as pistillate flower and it be only the pistil okay pistil is the single reproductive unit of the female flower okay now one more term there is the monoecious okay the plant has separate male flowers and female flowers occurring on the same plant likewise a good example is the corn okay maize you know that on the topmost part only male flowers are there okay and in the on the axis or on the axial part of the stem or the main part this second female flowers are there that means male and female flowers are separate but both are present on the same plant that means flowers are unisexual but plant is bisexual then we call it the monoecious okay and second is the dioecious okay that means both male and female plants may have flowers but one will have male and the other female flowers okay and both are present on the separate plants likewise the papaya and uh, this ashok and these are the good example okay even this asparagus date spinach these all are the good example of this one thing okay now we are moving forward to the next part of the flower that is the androecium clear the single unit of this male reproductive part is called as stamen okay you can see that 
the stamen is basically consist of this two part actually three part one this is the filament okay or you can call it the stalk second one that is the connective and third one that is the anther okay this connective is basically responsible to connect this anther with the this filament structure okay and basically this anthers are bilobed in nature okay if you are taking this ts means transverse section of this anther then you can see that these two lobes are there one lobe and two lobe that's why it is called as bilobed okay and this anther is responsible to produce the pollen grains right now so here we can learn the process of formation of male gamete that is called as microsporogenesis and this one is also called as microsporangium okay now what do you observe here when we take a ts of this anther then you can see that it has two lobes that's why it is called as the bilobe and there are four thecas are there that's why it is called as tetra thecas in nature okay in all this four corners you may find this four lobular structure okay and in this one you can see that this four layers are there everywhere you will find this four layer out of this outer three layers these are just protective in nature and the inner more that is the germinal in nature okay right and in the middle of this one thing you can see that the vascular tissue is there this is the connective okay and it is responsible for nourishing and supplying the uh, material to this one thing okay now at the time of the formation of the pollen grain what happened this inner one okay this uh, microspore cells is used to divide and form the tapetum and the tagmen clear and the inner one they undergoes in the uh, repeated mitotic division and form so many sporogenous cells okay then this sporogenous cell undergoes in the meiotic cell division and it form it form four haploid structure that is called as tetrad because all these four are in a group of four that's why it is called as tetrad and these are haploid in nature okay so this way you can see that when they form this pollen grain then this space become empty and it form chamber like structure who consists pollen grain that's why it is called as the pollen chamber or the pollen sac so you can see there is four pollen sac are there okay and here this pollen grains are present there okay and when it become mature then through this theca or this furrow it form a cleavage and it divides rapture and this rapturing is responsible for the dispersal of this pollen grain from this one okay so remember this is the simple process clear as we discussed already this microsporogenesis and uh, remember the pollen grain which is haploid in nature which is uh, basically release out from this pollen chamber is consisting this structure okay it is quite spherical maybe oval in nature okay oval in shape it is this two layer membrane outer exine and the inner antine remember this exine is quite thick dead and irregular and hygroscopic in nature what is the meaning of hygroscopic who used to absorb the water okay and this structure is actually helpful to stay and fix on the um, stigma surface okay next one thing the inner layer that is called as the antine this antine is actually the living membrane right and it is this one pore or in different species may be more than one and is called as the germ pore okay what is the function of germ pore at the time of pollination when this pollen grain shifted from male reproductive part to female reproductive part that is a stigma okay then it will when it will germinate no? then it will produce this germ tube from pollen tube from this germ pore okay and here you can see that it is two cell okay one that is the vegetative nucleus who is further responsible to produce the pollen tube nuclei okay and it will guide it the direction of the pollen tube from stigma to ovule okay 
and second is the generative nucleus okay it will further divide mitotically and produce the two male nuclei and they will also shifted where in the pollen tube and this way you can see that there are three nuclei one nuclei is the pollen tube nuclei and it is followed by the two male nuclei okay so the conditions are different in some species when this pollen grain releases and shifted on the stigma then they may be of this two cell structure and in some in in some species it may be three cell structure okay so it depends on the species clear so actually the viability okay and the consistency of this pollen grain is depends on the physical factors likewise the temperature moisture and the atmospheric conditions are humidity is also there okay now so this is all about the male reproductive part in which you observe that finally it produce pollen grains okay and this pollen grain consists male nuclei right now it is ready to transfer from anther to stigma of the female reproductive part later we will discuss in the pollination now here we move toward the female reproductive part a single is called as pistil or this female reproductive part is called as the gynecium okay this pistil is basically consist of three part one that is the ovary second is the style and third one that is the stigma clear in this one maybe this uh, pistil may be single or more than one okay then it may be called as the monocarpillary or polycarpillary okay or multicarpillary clear it may be syncarpus or it may be apocarpus syncarpus means what when they are fused okay apocarpus means what when they are free right now then here we come to uh, learn about this three part this is the ovary this ovary is swollen bulbous structure which is present at the base of the um, this uh, pistil and it consisting one special structure that is called as the ovule let us will discuss it this ovule consisting the female gamete that is the egg okay now here this is the style style is nothing it is a tubular structure who is responsible to connect this stigma and the ovary okay and it facilitate the transpassing of the pollen tube and this is the stigma a stigma is just a receptacle it is just a platform who modify itself to receive the pollen grains at the time of pollination remember it may be sticky it may be rough or it may have some feather structure to receive the pollen grain from the male reproductive part okay now then the next one thing here we are going to discuss the formation of the megaspore <coughs> that means the egg okay as earlier i told you what is the female gametophyte female gametophyte is the embryo sac and what is the location of the embryo sac in this diagram you can see that this is the embryo sac clear this embryo sac is actually a seven cell structure okay how it form and what are the seven cell and what is their function we are going to discuss in the next slide clear okay so in this one you can see that the centromere cell of the endo sorry that the embryo sac is considered as the megaspore mother cell okay it increases in size and later on it undergoes in the meiotic division first division is reduction who is responsible to divide this diploid nuclei into two haploid nuclei okay and two nuclei form there clear then this two nuclei undergoes in the mitotic division and they form this four cells of four nuclei which arrange linearly okay so now this time how many nuclei are there four haploid nuclei are there who arrange serially or linearly okay you can see that out of this four this three will degenerate maybe this three or this three okay and because of their destruction or their degeneration only one will remain there okay and it will further divide it mitotically to form two new cell okay it goes on the two opposite direction of that ovule 
वन एट द माइक्रोपाइल एंड एंड सेकेंड एट द चलाजल एंड क्लियर नाउ देन दिस टू सेल्स विल डिवाइडेड माइट्रोटिकली ओके बाय द टू रिपीटेड डिविजन एंड फॉर्म दिस फोर सेल एट द माइक्रोपाइल एंड एंड दिस फोर सेल एट द चलाजल एंड सो वॉट यू ऑब्जर्व हाउ मेनी न्यूक्लियज आर देयर एट न्यूक्लियज आर देयर एट सेल्स आर देयर देन वॉट एपन one nuclei from micropyle end and one nuclei from chalazal end transferred in the center of this embryo sac and it get fuses and form a diploid nuclei this is also called as secondary nucleus okay what is the future of this secondary nucleus it will responsible to produce the endosperm as a result of double fertilization okay this three cell at the uh, chalazal end they are going to produce antipodal cell these are called as antipodal still their function is not well known okay and then later this three cells at the chalazal uh, micropyle end this is considered the egg apparatus okay what is the egg apparatus it consisting three cell the center most egg cell which is haploid in nature is the female gamete and it is supported by two more haploid cells that is called the synergids the helping cell okay it is believed that the synergid cells are helpful for the fertilization okay to guide the path and direction of this one thing okay so here this diagram is actually explaining you the structure of the ovule okay see that this is the funiculus with the help of this funicle and this helum this ovule is attached with the wall of the ovary clear this vascular tissue is supporting there this bulbous structure is basically consisting this two integuments are there this is the outer integument and the inner integument clear here a pore like structure that is called the micropyle pore that's why this this part is called as micropyle and this side chalazal end okay so this side of the ovule is called as chalazal end this one is called as the micropyle end clear in the middle this nucellus is there this nucellus consisting in the center that is the embryo sac and as we discussed in the previous slide this embryo sac consisting seven cell okay remember this is important from the examination point of view this diagram as well as the number of cell okay how many cells are there seven cells are there this three antipodal cell this three egg apparatus egg apparatus consisting three cell one is center most egg cell haploid supported by two synergids and in the middle two cells are there who get fuses to form a diploid nuclei that is the secondary nucleus okay so remember this one thing just try to draw this diagram okay now so this is the female reproductive part and now it is ready to receive the pollen grains and the further processing of the uh, fertilization and fusion of gamete is there okay now so till this one thing it is very clear what is the male reproductive part what is the female reproductive part how the male gametes are producing there and how the female gamete is actually produced there now we are moving toward the next process that is what is the pollination okay simply the transfer of pollen grains from the stamen to the receptive stigma of the carpel is called as pollination okay and because of different mode of transfer okay this are very well adopted for uh, uh, this pollination process clear and on the basis of source of pollen grain okay we can categorize the, this pollination into three categories one that is the autogamy or simply what you call that is the cell pollination clear okay as it is very clear from this term auto means self and gamy means togetherness okay and cell pollination self means itself clear when the pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of the same flower okay what i said when the pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of the same flower is transferred then this is called as cell pollination okay it is also called as the autogamy for this one thing basically a bisexual flower is required 
Okay, the wheat, rice, pea, these all are the good example of this one thing and they are also adopted for this purpose. Okay, next one gaitanogami. Okay, now after this gaitanogami, the next one that is the xenogami. Okay, simply we call it the cross-pollination. Clear? What is the cross-pollination? The transfer of the pollen grain from anther to stigma of the another flower. Another flower means what? The flower of the other plant. This is the compulsion. Okay. So that's why when the uh, pollen grain is shifted or transferred from anther of one flower to stigma of the other flower of the another plant. Remember this thing. Then it is called as xenogamy. Okay. For example, this papaya, spinach and all this one thing. Now, then... One by one we are taking the autogamy, that means the cell pollination and cross pollination. Okay, as you know that the kind of pollination when the pollen grain is shifted from uh, the anther to the stigma of the same flower or the different flower of the same plant. Okay, then we call it the autogamy. Clear? Some conditions are there who facilitate this process of autogamy. So remember this term, one of the Christogamous flowers. Okay, the flowers are bisexual and they are closed in nature. Closed means what? That doesn't expose themselves with the surrounding. So that's why it is impossible to pollinate from by the other pollen grains. Okay. Second, they are chasmogamous in nature. These flowers are chasmogamous in nature. Okay. So these are open flowers with exposed sex organ, and the anthers and the stigma of these flowers are brought together by growth, bending, or folding on this pollen from another flower can land on the stigma as well as okay so this one is the chasmogamous in nature okay then the bud pollination when the flower is closed in nature it is bud in nature okay before it's blooming before its exposure with the surrounding okay it's male and female reproductive part get matured and they used to fuses with each other okay so that's why this bud pollination Next one that is the homo homogamy that means the maturation of anthers and stigma of a flower perform at the same time. This is the most important condition. Only the bisexuality or the having two sexes together is not enough. Okay, Both the two gonads should be matured at the same time. This is the compulsion. Okay, Now then we are also finding some these flowers are non-attractive in nature. Okay, generally these flowers are colorless or green in color. So they were not attracted by the different agencies like the insects and this one. Clear? These flowers are basically small in size, so they cannot be easily identified and uh, uh, attracted by the others. Okay, these flowers are smellless, so it cannot be easily identified by this insect from the distance okay and this nectar glands are absent you know that basically this insects actually roaming from one flower to another flower not for spreading the pollen grains they are searching their food the nectar okay so in search of this nectar they are roaming from one flower to another one so because of absence of this nectar gland Okay, they were not uh, interfered by the insects, clear. So this is the basic feature about the, or the adaptation for the cell pollination. Okay, here we may find some advantages of this cell pollination. So first of all, the most important feature is there. There is 100% surety of the pollination, clear. Second thing, there is very few number of pollen grains actually required. Third thing, no any special adaptation or any kind of modification is needed. There is no wastage of energy in producing large number of pollen grain as well as this sweet nectar. Okay. And most of the most important fact is that they are not dependent on the other agencies for this uh, carrying this pollen grain from one to other one okay so this is the advantages of self pollination but you know that 
each and every coin has two sides one is good and second is bad or one is head and second is tail similarly along with this uh, advantages some disadvantages are also there okay so what are these only so first of all uh, this cell pollination come from a lack of variation that allows no adaptation to the changing environment or potential pathogen attack okay because of repetition of the same genetic material they loses their viability they loses their resistance power okay so this is the important fact they can be easily caught by the pathogens clear then the cell pollination lead the inbreeding depression that means continuous use of the same genetic material will reduces the power of the uh, this one the seeds and uh, productivity clear so that is called the inbreeding depression next one thing genetic defects in the cell pollinating plant cannot be eliminated because no introduction of the new genetic material and finally there is no variation so no adaptation no important for the evolutionary point of view okay so now this is this is all about the cell pollination we are moving forward for the cross pollination clear as you know that what is the definition of cross pollination right the transfer of pollen grain from anther of one flower to stigma of the other flower of another plant then it is called as cross pollination clear and for this purpose clear we observe few basic facts and adaptation is something so one that is the dicogamy okay in this one the maturation and the release of the pollen grain is not synchronized with the stigma okay so here are the two term one is the protendry and second is the protogyny protendry means what the flower is bisexual but in this one the male gamete become earlier produced okay so it is impossible to self pollination okay and the protogyny the female reproductive part mature earlier in comparison of the male reproductive part clear second is the heterostyly when the size of the male and female reproductive part is different that is called the heterostyly clear then self incompatibility that means even though self pollination is there but this pollen grain is unable to compete with the other pollen grain it is unable to germinate or some other adaptation is also there that is a self incompatibility and finally the hypogamy the male or female sex organ themselves prove as a barrier to prevent the self pollination even though the flower is bisexual in nature either they are a physical barrier or they are having some structures which doesn't allow to interact with each other okay so this is a basic feature now this crossing over can be classified on the basis of the agency of transportation clear so on the basis of this agency of transportation or the agents of pollination this cross pollination may be or of having may, may have two type of agent one that is the abiotic agent and second is the biotic agents clear abiotic means non living uh, factors are responsible to carry them so here this two are basically there one is the wind and second is the water okay so when the pollen grains are transferred with the help of this wind then this kind of pollination cross pollination is called as wind pollination or a specific term is given that is called as the anemophily okay and for this purpose some specific uh, adaptations are there okay a large number of pollen grains produces clear this pollen grains must be very small right so they can be easily carried by this wind they should be feathery flat okay and they adopted in such a way by which they can stay in the air for a long period of time right the flowers actually grows on the outer surface of the plant okay so this all adaptation should be there second thing the water okay when the agency is which one that is the water when the pollen grain is transferred with the help of this water or the water wave then it is called as hydrophily okay 
the pollination by water. The good example is Vallisneria and this one thing, which is the aquatic plant. Okay, now then on the basis of this biotic agents, it may be or of different ones, just like the insects. When the po it is the most common type of cross pollination in which these insects are responsible to transfer pollen grain from one flower to another flower. Okay, and in this one is called as entomophily. Clear? And you know that these flowers are very well adopted for this purpose. Clear? To attract the insect. Okay, if you observe them in your surrounding, then these flowers are colorful. Okay, those flowers who blooming in the day hours, they are dark in color. Clear? They are big in size. Okay, they are very much attractive in nature. Clear? And those flowers who blooms in the night or the night blooming flower, just like jasmine, ratrani, okay, what you call sadabahar, okay, these all her singar and these flowers, champa, chameli, okay, these flowers are night blooming. Basically, they are white in color, they are bright in color, so they can reflect the moonlight and can easily observe. And one more thing, they have such a strong smell. So, even in the darkness, they can be identified by the insects. Okay, so this is the insect pollination, what is called as the entomophily. Right. Next one thing, the birds. This cross pollination is called as the ornithophily. What is the agency? Birds. Okay, you observe in your surrounding, even this uh, smallest hummingbird, it may be responsible, it is also responsible for this. Uh, transfer then the molluscan malacophily that garden slug or the snail okay so when it just move from one place to another one then this runner or the creeper plants okay it used to pollinate by this one clear then the chiraptophily the bat the mammal you know that these bats or pteropods are basically fruit eaters okay so when they move from one tree to other tree or one plant to another plant, then in search of their food, okay, then they are responsible to pollinate this one. And finally, the reptiles, clear. So this lizards, garden lizard, okay, even the snacks and this one, they are also responsible for pollinating these flowers, okay. You just wonder that the largest flower in the world that is the Rephlesia, it is also uh, pollinated by the flies okay and it produces such a foul smell to attract them now we are moving forward uh, so pollination is over so now what happened finally already the pollen gland produces they already transferred from male to female reproductive part then what happened the germination of pollen gland the growth of the pollen tube okay in the previous uh, diagram you learn that this pollen gram who settle down on the stigma is used to absorb the sticky uh, substances from the by the outer surface of this pollen grain which is hygroscopic in nature it gets swallowed and swelling is responsible to break the jumpo and this antine is coming out okay so this antine is coming out it penetrate the stigma the surface of the stigma and through this pollen grain it just reaches to the ovule okay in this one what happened the you know that the three cell structure the anterior most one that is the pollen tube nuclei and it is followed by the two male nuclei there okay now so this way uh, we observe that a specific a specific uh, act is actually performed there that is called a double fertilization and triple fusion okay you know that two male nuclei are there clear so when this pollen tube reaches to the ovule okay and when it enters through the micropylon then here the anteriormost part of the pollen tube will degenerate and it will release this two male nuclei to the micropyle pore or chamber okay then what happened one of these two male nuclei is reaches to the egg cell and it fuses and form the zygote this is the first fertilization what is the result of first fertilization it is responsible to produce the zygote okay 
then the second nuclei it just transpasses through this egg apparatus it reaches in the center of this embryo sac and fuses with that secondary nucleus now here the fusion of three nuclei two nuclei from the secondary cell and one nuclei from the male gamete and this way a uh, second fertilization is observed and this triple fusion that's why this phenomena is called as double fertilization and triple fusion and it is one of the special feature of angiospermic plant okay this navashin in 1898 discovered this process what is the importance of this procedure it importance is that it form actually a triploid nucleus in the center which is responsible to produce the endosperm what is the function of endosperm endosperm will responsible for nourishing the growing embryo right so that's why the special feature is there that is a double fertilization and triple fusion okay you can see in this diagram this two male nuclei releases here out of this one nuclei get fuses with the egg cell and second nuclei transpasses so this one thing fuses this one and it form a triple fusion okay so remember this is the special feature you know that the coconut water which you drink na this is also example of the liquid endosperm how nutritious it is okay now so at the time of growth of the um, embryo a development this endosperm is responsible for uh, nourishing it clear now here with the help of this one what are the changes which observe okay in this ovule after the fertilization you can also term as the post fertilizational changes clear so first of all this ovary turns into fruit you know that what is fruit fruit is nothing special it is just a modified form of the ovary clear here ovary as a result of double uh, fertilization it transform in the form of the fruit clear now so this wall of the ovary will form pericarp of the uh, which one thing that is the fruit okay just recall the structure of the mango the outermost covering that is the pericarp okay then ovule okay it it is responsible to turns into the seed clear it has this funicle which is responsible for the stalk which attaches the uh, seed to the uh, margin of this ovary hilum it is responsible to connect and vascularize this one thing micropylan this is like the germ pore from where the epicotyle and the hypocotyle part will comes at the time of germination and this integument two integuments are there the outer one who's from the testa and the inner one from the stegman clear i think so you cut the raw mango okay and here you find that fibrous hard structure that is the testa and then it is followed by a uh, tissue paper like structure what do you call that is the translucent uh, membrane structure that is this tegmen clear now then the nucellus okay it is basically responsible to form this uh, uh, centermost part that is the perispermic part in nature and this embryo sac this synergy will degenerate this egg cell will turn into the embryo okay secondary nucleus will turn into the turn into the endosperm its function is nourishment and this antipodal cell also get degenerated okay so this is the result of the double fertilization clear now here two specific terms are there one is parthenogenesis and second is parthenocarpy clear remember parthenos means artificially and genesis means to produce okay so the process of development of embryo from unfertilized egg is called as parthenogenesis basically till today okay you just learn that the seed is produces because of the fertilization okay and the embryo will produce only by the fertilization the new individual can be produce only by the as a result of fertilization but no sometime because of natural method or artificial method okay this egg cell or any other cell from this new cells undergoes in the growth or the development of the new individual then it is called a parthenogenesis okay if the new individual will develop from the egg cell then it is called a haploid parthenogenesis 
and except then this egg cell any other cell from the uh, this uh, new cell has, that will be deployed in nature that is called a deployed parthenogenesis clear remember this special term and finally the parthenocarpy okay remember this term parthenos means artificial and carpy means ovary okay so the process of development of the seedless fruit is called as parthenocarpy this is the difference between the parthenogenesis and parthenocarpy it is responsible for the production of the new individual and this one is responsible for the production of the fruit but what is the specialty of this fruit because there is no fertilization that's why there is no seed clear so this parthenocarpy is the process of producing fruit without seed so it is called as the production of seedless fruits now these days you can see that this papaya okay the grape wine grape we are producing them by artificially motivation or by inducing them chemically or harmonic harmonically or by using some artificial method okay we just um, motivate we just induces that ovary to turns in the form of the fruit okay so this way we can see that the seedless fruit is developed by the uh, flower that is called as parthenocarpy so finally the process of development of seedless fruit is called as parthenocarpy so now it become a common practice in the horticulture okay where the seedless fruits are actually developing for the more economic values okay so this guavas brinjals okay even this wine grapes to produce the wine okay and this papaya this now this is this all are seedless in nature okay now finally i want to thank you for listening me carefully okay and patiently okay now so today we just learn what are what, what is the flower what are the types of pollination what is the process of pollination okay and then the mechanism of fertilization clear production of the seed okay in ninth class you already learn the fruit okay so what i said the fruit is nothing special it is just a modified form of the ovary which form as a result of post fertilizational changes clear and uh, this way this fruit will carry this seed and this seed will responsible to produce the next next generation clear you know that fruits is also also are of two type one is the uh, pulpy fruit okay or you can call a sulcan fruit and second is the dry fruit clear this is all berries and these all are the example of dry fruit okay and this one the tomatoes and uh, this uh, mango and these all are the example of the pulpy fruit or the sulcan fruit clear one more categorization is there the true fruit and the false fruit okay the true fruit is which developed as a double fertilization and as a result of modification of the ovary as a post fertilizational changes clear while the false fruit is the example of this one when the fruit is not developed from the flower from the ovary but other part of the flower just like the apple is a false fruit clear your uh, it developed from the thalamus clear your this one what do you call that is the anji okay it is a it is an inflorescence clear so this is the basic feature just draw the diagram of the monocot and dicot seed clear you know that what is the basic difference the presence and absence of uh, single and two cotyledons are there okay so learn the diagram of monocot seed and dicot seed in your pre previous exam the structure of seed was also um uh, asked to draw there okay but you learn in the ninth class so that's why i am not repeating here okay so again thank you very much for your um patience see you in the next video thank you